All right, buddies, let's check out the patch notes for humankind. It has been a minute since we've played the game and I wanted to give a game that I like so much a little bit of time in the oven, right? They need to bake it a little bit longer. Sometimes, you know, games, they come out and they've got issues. It's normal. And I'm curious to see now how has the game evolved and then we'll jump in and play a game. So this was the patch on the 18th of August. I think this was a hotfix patch. So this is mostly just bug fixes, nothing like massively changed to the game, which is pretty cool, right? We like to see a lot of bug fixes, especially like launch day, catching a lot of those issues can be difficult. Now we've got the August 28 patch notes. This was the second week patch. A lot of people in the very launch of the game were complaining about things like oil and uranium not appearing in large enough quantities. There was issues with like the end game triggering and um, the whole host of bugs and stuff like that. So they improved the legibility of walls. That's awesome. Uh, they improved the legibility of the outpost panel. Awesome. It changed the bonus provided by some cultural wonders. I actually don't know what those changes are. Side note for the developers, please in future, if you're making specific changes, list those specific changes in the patch notes. That's so important. I, as a player, I never want to like get like, oh, we've updated the game and then I have to go in and look at, okay, what did you change? That is just, that's that frustrates me as a player because I want to know what changed um, rather than have to like play half a game and then open up a, a window and be like oh actually this whole thing that you thought worked a certain way changed on you i don't want the rug pulled out from under me i want reliable consistent change that i can adapt and prepare for this is actually why a lot of people don't like games that update a lot and that's un understandable i do like games that update a lot i like them to be updated like once or twice a year maybe three or four times a year but what I really, really don't like is when you have ninja changes. Ninja changes trigger the hell out of me. And this is a ninja change. They tell us about it, but it's kind of, it's a bit semi ninja change. So some small upgrades to the AI, which is great because the AI is not the most amazing. And it is, it's a difficult challenge to make an AI for a 4X game. That's, that's fair. Ah, this was a huge bug that they fixed. The new tenant unlocked mandatory has been fixed. Uh, this was a major problem that I actually ran into and uh, it soft locked my game so i'm glad that they got all that fixed a lot it looks like a lot of critical game bugs have been fixed yeah a lot of end turn bugs have been fixed patronage meter wasn't correctly updated awesome this was a problem i also ran into fixed an issue where queuing and building two plus districts in the same turn cost less industry interesting so you could get to a certain snowball point where you were building so many districts so quickly that you could actually build them cheaper because you were one turning them and so the price wasn't updating correctly which is kind of cool um, but it is it good to get fixed Edo Japanese have been fixed. Does not display the bonus for being next to a mountain until it's built. Okay, that's good. Uh, anything that is a UI issue should be fixed because because that's the problem is if you have like a UI issue where the incorrect information is being communicated to the player, that's like a massive problem because then the player's experience and their decision making is completely thrown out of whack. Fixed an issue where in some cases the AI empires offered a border treaty. Awesome. There was a few little weirdnesses with diplomacy. In a few cases, AIs don't consider all city gains when they have a lot of cities. Interesting. So that must have been something related to trade deals uh, where you buy a resource that boosts all of your cities. Oh, that's interesting. Nomadic AI armies are assigned to regular claim missions. Cool. Uh, fixed an issue where army 3D models can disappear when a camera sequence is played. Oh, I'm so glad for this. I had so many instances of my armies disappearing and then you have to like save and reload or you have to like split your units and then recombine them in a certain order. A lot, there was a lot of like little weird visual things that were happening in the game and I'm glad to see them actually get fixed. Independent people can r ransack a ruin. Ah, uh, fixed an issue where independent people don't lose levies over time during sieges. This is another problem I actually personally ran into and it really triggered the hell out of me. I think I had an independent city under siege for about 40 turns before I realized, hang on a minute, why haven't I taken the city? Um, but I'm, I'm glad to see that get fixed. Loads of UI fixes, error occurred, all sorts of great stuff. Dead population from starvation are not updated. Oh man, this just looks like an absolute host, a feast of fixes and this is amazing this is exactly what i like to see from a developer when they release a game especially a big and complicated game like humankind i think 4x communities are a little bit more tolerant of kind of little bit wonky games a little bit wonky on release right we'll sit because we're gonna be playing your game for a while so we're happy for you to release a little bit of a wonky game but we do expect you to fix it relatively quickly like if an issue is brought up i don't think we will wait more than like a major patch cycle so i'm glad to see that even within the first week of this game being out we saw massive amounts of like fixes and bug fixes absolutely brilliant and i really appreciate them taking the time 
to do this because like the game the game wasn't in a, an amazing state when it came out it was, it's a fun game and it has a lot of features but it was in it, it's one of these things where they you know you, you can test a game and you can check for a game and you can find bugs but once your game hits like the masses like once your game hits like even youtubers or uh or or, or or twitch streamers twitch streamers like how many twitch streams have you seen where some dude's playing some new game and he finds some absolutely wild bug because you're doing something weird with the game and those are just cases you're not going to run into when you're doing like corporate corporate testing right when you're doing like qa it's like it's hard to find all those weird edge cases that players and streamers and stuff are going to run into so you know the the real test of a game is how well do they update it after the rubber meets the road and all the issues are found. Uh, we've released a new update for Humankind. Here's the patch log. So this was the Tuesday, September 7th patch. Uh, decreased the combat strength of the Man of War unit. The Man of War unit was kind of insane, if I remember correctly. Uh, out of the game's option to set the speed of horizontal vertical panning with keyboard inputs. Brazilian version. Okay, changes. Updated the Chinese translation. Glaciers are now icebergs. It's probably a better change. Uh, save corruption fix due to the buyout feature being available. Awesome. Fix the cause of crash. Crash fixes, awesome. Declare war. Fix several issues for minimum value of oil. We're not reached in extreme map situations. Okay, that's brilliant. And more fixes for the resource distribution stuff. Fixed an issue where settlers have no upkeep. Fixed an issue with the army upkeep formula for air and missile units. Okay, awesome. This was a big problem that a lot of people ran into. If you built like a large uh, fleet of aircraft or missiles, you're like, you would get like a stack overflow negative integer whatever uh on your income and you would like end up at minus eighty thousand gold per turn so this is a huge change really really glad to see these fixes all right now we have the was this the september 7th one so yeah now we've got the september 19th one and this was a relatively big patch as well with some actual changes in it that like change how the game works so for example added coastal sieges there was like a weird edge case in the game where if you had an island that was like completely built out with districts and then someone was trying to attack it they couldn't actually start a siege because you can't attack from the water onto land to start a siege so this was straight up just a gameplay change where they added that ability because they must never have ran into that edge case it's again one of those things where you know players will run into it out of the notion of attacker anachronism to the limit the damage formula i'm curious about that i don't know what that means out of the notification when you have only one technology left to activate the end of game trigger i do wish there was a way that you had the option to choose when you end the game uh if you're if you're that far ahead i feel like you should get to choose the turn that the game ends added information on the next threshold on pollution tool tips okay pollution is probably the biggest late game problem in the game uh in terms of design and it's probably not amazingly implemented at the moment so anything that gives the player more information about to, about pollution about how it actually works and any changes to pollution are super great because it's not it's not working right now uh improve the surrender panel that's nice there are some significant changes to the surrender panel that we'll talk about in the game that we actually play improve the pathfinding computation over the fog of war yeah the pathfinding with the fog of war was really really annoying so i'm hoping that this is actually a significant and meaningful change ai empires will now focus more on their emblematic districts and should be more efficient in their placement my hope is that this will actually result in a slightly more challenging ai um, emblematic districts tend to be quite powerful and so if the ai focuses on them more we'll see them uh It'll be better they'll, they'll be they'll be stronger ai emperors should now properly place common quarters to gain stability this was a bit of an issue where the ai um for the commons quarter placement was actually using the old commons quarter code where uh clustering commons quarters together was really really efficient to get stability and now it's going to use the the updated one where you want to spread your commons quarters out near other districts uh merchant gains now scale more with eras i don't know what that means um we'll have to figure out what that is I, I i assume that has something to do with the era stars that you earn as well as the estate now scales quadratically with eras oh th i think this this is to do with their abilities so the merchant gains now scale with the era of the game a little bit better which is good because the merchant gains were a bit you know they were a bit weak um in the late game i feel like and the estate gains now scale quadratically with eras so my hope is that that will mean you um you end up with a lot more because quadratically means you know era one you get one era two you get four era three you get nine era five you get 25 era six you get 36 right you, it's a it's, it's getting bigger faster we've also reduced the expansionist cost that's really really good expansionist was the hardest star to get 
and um, it should not be that hard in my opinion. Reduce the impact on faith on the two initial tenets, shamanism and polytheism. Really glad to see those changes. Um, they felt like, it felt like that was the only decision you needed to make in order to have a strong religion. It was way, 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 way too, too, too strong. Reduce the per district uh, stability impact of local pollution. Awesome. It was, it was kind of insane. Um, increase the cost of claims for players on high end of territory count. I wonder what that means. Claims. So like claiming territory? Interesting. So it'll be the more land you have, the harder it will be to expand. Increase the global pollution threshold by a factor of 2.5. That's good. It felt a little bit too easy to um, get to your pollution threshold. Natural reserves now recapture pollution. That's also really good. It gives us another reason to build these natural reserves. I think natural reserves are one of the more interesting uh, kind of late game districts that you get available to build and adding more pollution interaction mechanics with them kind of builds out the pollution system and makes natural reserves really fun. I just really like building natural reserves so anything that makes them better is something that I appreciate as a player. Uh, balance local and global pollution effects to put more importance on local effects that's good. Uh, the impact on FIMS doesn't not use the right feedback. Uh, okay so the tool tips aren't updated right now for the pollution stuff. Slightly reduces the pollution impact of airports, airfields and other special districts to which pollution reductions don't apply. Okay Okay, brilliant some infrastructures now reduce pollution from airports awesome uh sewage treatment plant now reduces farmer quarter pollution that's brilliant loosened civics requirement to make rare civics more likely to appear that's really nice it did feel like you would often get to the late game and you'd still be missing like five or ten civics i don't expect in every single game that i play that i should un unlock every civic in the game but i would expect to unlock the majority of them and so i like to see changes like this Added a minimum value to the multiplier properties of enacting and cancelling civics. I'm pretty sure there was a massive exploit that Spiffing Brit used, which uh, fair play to him getting the game fixed <laughs> by finding the most broken things. Changed Midas strength from capitalist to moneymaker. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I, I think that it has to do with the AI persona abilities you can give. Fix an issue where civics cannot be unlocked under specific conditions. Amazing. We ran into this problem so many times when we were playing multiplayer with the Yogscast. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that this means he won't run into that specific issue anymore. Fixed frame drops due to Soviet districts and trade districts. This probably had to do with like the little tiny models moving around on the map. Fixed an issue where district 3D models were no, no longer displayed under specific conditions. Super happy about that. Eventually, at some point in the game, your cities would just turn into this like massive gray concrete, like grayscale stuff. And it was really, really annoying because it took you out of the game a bit. I fixed an issue where army pawns disappear and combat preview gets locked. Retreating aircraft carrier carrying air units cause air units to disappear. Awesome. Anything that makes air... Air units are always such a finicky unit to uh, to set up for these kind of games. Uh, economy fixes. If you reload the game, you could multiply use the merchant's ability. Fix an issue where Ari Ordu and Orda outposts have a different exploitation feedback compared to regular outposts. Fix an issue where cultural wonders are replaced. Ah, okay. An unplayed state. This is actually a bug I encountered once, I think when I was merging my cities in a game, in a multiplayer game. And um, my hanging gardens got basically like unplaced. Um, and I lost an effect and somebody stole a wondrous effect from me, which really triggered me. Fix an issue where local pollution thresholds is scaling with world side. That's good. Where city stability breakdown does not list the district pollution penalty separately. Awesome. Fix an issue where players able to fight against a ship on land after sieges. Oh, that's weird. So there's just a massive, massive, insane amount of fixes, which I'm hoping now when we go into the game, uh, when we get in there, we're going to see a much better, much more updated and much more robust game. Um, I'm super glad to see all these fixes. This is this is what I would expect from Amplitude. Amplitude are very, very reliable about updating and fixing and improving their games. And so to be able to go like a month on from release, like to the day almost, I think 17th of September, I think the game released on the 17th of October no uh 17th of august so to the month they have like patch notes with nearly 200 300 lines maybe I don't, I don't know how many lines that is this is like four or five pages of patch notes of all just fixes and tweaks to get the game to run perfectly because we found a whole bunch of issues so this is exactly what i want to see out of amplitude i think i would like to see maybe one or two more patches like this next month and the month after that and then i'd like to see some more balance changes actually creep into this and that would be like what I would expect to see, say, December, January. That would be how I, as a player, that's how long I would like to wait for a balance update. Um, ideally, I would like a balance update tomorrow. Don't get me wrong. It's the 22nd of uh, uh, September. I'd like to see a balance update tomorrow. But we're probably not going to see a balance update tomorrow. 
But I would think I could wait probably reasonably another two to three months at most before I would be like, okay, come on, like, you know what the balance problems are. Let's get this patch out. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for the patch review. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time.